Caralho, hope you're fine. This is the Shaggy Show. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Good luck, studio. Oh, it's the Shaggy Podcast. Oh, there's going to be some drama ahead. All I wanted was a pie. And then I hatched out of an egg. Okay, bring the mic over. He's ready to record. I see your mental condition is improving. Is it metaphorical? Is it, is it deep? Is it deep? Look at the boy. He said all that shy is right. Gee. Why me, Governor? It's the Shy Life Podcast. Hello, Paul. Six hundred. Seven feet. 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 Bonjour et bienvenue au podcast The Shy Life. Hello. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Shy Life Podcast with me, Paul the Shy Yeti. How are you doing? Oh, I'm all right. So what's going on this episode? Well, we've got Martin Holmes back. Hi, Martin. Yeah, so. Yes, it's me again. <laughs> well, we're, we're, going, <laughs> we're coming back um, along the 70s again. We, we went down the <laughs> 70s once, and now we're turned around and we're coming back again. But in, this means I'll different... say all the same things I said last week because I've forgotten. Last well, week. I'm going to try and avoid that by choosing things I hope Ooh. that we haven't, um, or, or singers that we haven't covered. It, but, it uh, sounds like you plan these things. <laughs> well, the thing at the moment, the, the worst problem was that like the first two episodes were done quite close together but quite a while back and and then at least it's only a month since we recorded the last one the problem was uh, the gap between episode two and three because i couldn't remember i hadn't edited episode two when we a did month episode for you, three young man but a lifetime for some poor creature yeah I know. It, it, the the timeline of podcasts can be um vibbly wobbly yeah i mean i released one quite recently that was from 2020 and just slipped in amongst all, it was one that just Sat, sat around for a while. It's not like the others. One of these shows is know. kind of the same. I, 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 the, 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 the weird person in me thought, oh, the, the, this this episode from 2020 has got the 2023 theme on. If it had been edited sooner, it would have been. You know, nobody cares, Paul. It, it doesn't matter. When so, you were young and full of vim, did you think, oh, I sound sprightly and young? Have you noticed that when when you you, oh. you hear young people, uh, even radio people, who and how they were talking even two or three years ago? It can, it's amazing the difference well obviously i've been doing these episodes from 30 years ago as well so i definitely sound young and squeaky Hello, <laughs> and that wasn't because i've been drinking <laughs> or sipping helium or whatever you, whatever you do with helium but uh, um Oh, that's really anyway. exciting. What are you talking about this week, Paul? That's either Kermit the Frog or Ick has turned up there. <laughs> um, anyway, I think we should run the theme music and when we come back we'll we're we're gonna be sort of focusing around seventy seven. We I don't know if we'll get into seventy eight, we'll see. Yeah, let's run that theme music. Darling, it's the Shy Life Podcast. <laughs> yes, well it's a positive thing for the High Life, the Shy Life. Um, I'll, I'll go anywhere for a potato. Delicious. Hello, Captain. How are you? You quite like a big bang, don't you? Good grief. Well, that's a whopper. Oh, go shy, Yeti. Oh, I hope he hasn't found out my secret. I think he has. I love the Yeti test. It's my favourite thing. If you thought that was bad, just listen to this. Yeah, I, I have a strange he's drawn the Yeti and the John's ankles as well. <laughs> I could eat more body weight than crisps <laughs> every day. Has anyone seen my hot sauce? It's all gooey and juicy. Yum, 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 yum. Here comes the grizzly. It's the Shy Life Podcast. He can't wait for it to begin. <laughs> I'd like that. Yeah. Look, mommy, I'm famous. <laughs> marvelous. Marvelous, Paul. Hi there. So, yes, I think we'd sort of got into into bits of 77, but uh, I think towards the end, uh, um, you know, there's quite a, lot of, quite a lot of people in this list, even just starting with the, the number one singles. The, there's certainly people here I don't think we've discussed. Right. Um, for instance, oh. one, of the big, one of the big number ones at the start of 77 was Don't Give Up On Us by David Soul. Yes. Um, of course, he's. I he, he, mother loved David Soul. 
she had the she was a woman of a certain age at that point in her life she must have been well was it 77 she'd been well certainly in a yeah she mid 40s i suppose at that stage and um, like quite young then well <laughs> than me now yes compared, even compared to me <laughs> but yes no she she bought the uh, i think is it was it the silver lady the, the one with silver lady on yeah, anyway the, yeah. the lp uh, with him with his mustache and looking all country and western mm. oh she yeah oh, she adored david soul my mum he's had he's had five wives i don't know that doesn't seem to matter at the same time no not at the same time i don't think so um yeah oh he's been yeah uh it's just the one of those things that the wikipedia confronts you with uh it's it's fascinating again i mean because starsky and hutch was a huge and he wouldn't have had i don't imagine he would have had a recording career if it hadn't been for starsky and hutch being so popular and him sort of picking up a guitar in the odd episode and saying oh i can also sing a bit but uh it was i mean he was well country and western wasn't he He was you know what he was very much of that ilk but uh but, you know, people liked him, uh, and Starsky and Hutch was a huge show. It was absolutely huge. I mean, this is uh, what people forget. I mean, I think only in, in television terms, because there was only 88, I think, 88 episodes, it wasn't uh, a massive hit. You know, it, it got cancelled after the four years. It fell in in that weirdly strange time when TV violence was all, you know, everything was being talked about and so it went more towards comedy and that's what actually pretty much in the end killed it stone dead but uh, but a really popular show and, and in the first couple of years of that are are as strong as any of the cop shows of that era i mean the, the cop shows of uh, which also brought us strangely enough telly savalas singing as well yeah. uh, the cop shows of that era uh were kind of they were they were the huge exports but they really got into the british culture you know by being played in prime time fabulous fabulous series uh, certainly the first couple of starsky and Hutch did get a bit silly towards the end but then a lot of shows do it uh it's quite telling actually i i'm not, I, I i don't know what was going on except that he must have had a very busy like 77 78 79 mm. um he, he has he, he's not married in those years he he gets divorced in 77 and married again in 80 so uh, i imagine life was a <laughs> life wasn't really uh, sort of d- didn't fit being married properly it was probably just a very, very crazy it, time i think we sometimes forget uh, there were actors in america who actually used to commute across country i mean uh, i think alan alder did it for the entire 11 years of mash he would fly home on a friday night and fly back on a monday morning uh, and if you weren't based actually in la you know or you had to move your entire life to la maybe you know you, you were an east coast person rather than a west coast person eh? and of course the sheer amount of work to make 24 25 hours of television a year you know people are, i think sometimes take it for granted that you know telly just appears but they forget how much graft is involved. I mean, someone's got to write the scripts for these things. Some, you know, you've got to get directors in. They've got to think it's about 10 days to film an hour of television. It's a phenomenal amount of work and long, long days. And I think it takes its toll on people's personal life. Looking at his his albums, he, he's released five albums, mm. but only the first two were, mm. well, at least in the UK, only the first mm. two were, well, pretty much everywhere. Only the first two were the big ones. Mm. David Soul in 1976 mm. and Paying to an Audience of One. No, Playing to, to an Audience, to an audience, of, audience one. of One. Yes. That was number eight. Yeah, Paying uh, to an Audience of One would be a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the first one got to number two in the UK. Um, but he's had some compilation albums. He had, he had an album in 79, didn't do as well. An album in 82, uh, an album in 97. But uh, I think he's been. Don't give up on us was one of the songs, yeah, and and Silver yeah. Lady, well, I think was the other big hit. The interesting thing is, though, and that doesn't really reflect the um, the. Well, it wasn't there weren't albums, but he actually had three singles in the sixties. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the covered man. I mean, none of these have chart positions. No. Um, before which is US only release and no one's going to cry for you, baby. Um, that those were in 66 and 67 and, um, 
then well, I suppose that's the weird thing isn't it i mean you've got people who actually it, it, it maybe you know they, they had this musical career but then they become actors and then become famous and then they think oh but and then someone notices oh wait a minute you used to record music i mean again you think like davy jones and the, and the monkeys but also i mean you think I, I uh last year i think it was or maybe the year before now there was a an lp of peter capaldi songs came out mm. i don't know if you you heard that or yeah. knew of that but uh and you sort of think oh peter capaldi doing an lp and then of course you remember that he was in this punk band mm. <laughs> all those years ago you know mm. um now, when you if you look at the chart positions, the um, "Don't Give Up on Us" mm. is uh, I mean, uh, "Silver Lady" was I mean that was num that was number one mm. in the UK mm. as was "Don't Give Up on Us." But when you look at how successful "Don't Give Up on Us" was, like so, number one in Australia, number four mm. in Belgium, it was number two in Ireland, number three in Netherlands, number three. Um, set you up for life, or yeah, others. number one set, in New set Zealand you up for ex-wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, whereas it wasn't, it, Silver Lady wasn't as popular in other some other countries. So no. Um, yeah. That, but he had five. Well, he had four top ten hits in the UK. Mm. He had Don't Give Up on This, Going In with My Eyes Open, which was number two. Okay. Which uh, I, I I'm I don't really know that one. No, I, I have to. Do know that one, okay. Silver Lady number one. So the first, the first three, um, the first three singles were uh, were either number one or number two. And then Let's Have a Quiet Night in was number eight. Um, and and I'll it sure brings out the love in your eyes in nineteen seventy number twelve. Well. Now you mention it, I'm thinking, yeah, that that, that actually does sound familiar. Yeah. But, I, I, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, he. He, he he had another single that sort of came back into 80 with singles i think i've got a single somewhere on the shelf here which was uh from a film called the stick up which is a david soul um single yeah i i don't know why the last of those five singles got to number 12 so it wasn't top 10 but um you think that you know if he'd gone away i mean they all look like they're from perhaps this those first two albums but you'd mm -hmm. think there just isn't a chop. Chop. Well, else. Uh, again, but when when you think about, I mean, the monkeys, you know, the albums after they weren't on TV, they they were popular, but I don't think there were many big singles from them. Yeah, you know, the the monkeys singles come from the TV era, really, don't they? Yeah, so David, David Soul, very, very big, but in, in more than one. Mm. Medium, well, again, but... I suspect his his high profile music career sort of paralleled his high profile tv series and once once one went away so did the other really mm. um, oh how they forget the fickle public <laughs> yeah that the, the the number one that follows um don't give up on us is sung by somebody we've never really talked about as far as i'm aware but i think she has quite an interesting career and, and one of one of her songs i'm particularly keen on although it's a cover with um Talking about Julie Covington, um, oh, ooh, don't quote me. Ar yeah, don't quote me, Argentina, oh. though at this stage. But yes, she she was in Rock Follies, which I, I have I have on DVD just because I thought it would be a, a curio, and it is. And I'd watched the I watched the first season, but I haven't mm. gone back to the second season yet. No. But um, but she was also in things like Godspell with mm. David Essex. Um, she, and, proper, and, proper West End music star really yeah um, uh, presu presumably is that the big version of argentina or i think because yeah. elaine i did elaine page actually have it as a single or i'm, I'm this not would be the original soundtrack recording one or the original yeah. recording um original cast recording i suppose they call it didn't they but uh so covington was the original um uh, just minute, oh, just I've got a, I've got a sentence here. I can tell you. Um, so I know that sometimes the uh, the original LP or the original release of something isn't the person who ends up in the stage play. Is it? It's uh, it's like the the songs from Song and Dance was uh, yeah, before Song and Dance was done. It, 
on Wikipedia it says, in 1976, the composer Andrew Lloyd Webber saw her performing cabaret and recognising her from Rock Folly, suggested to lyricist Tim Rice that she might be the actress to play the title role in the original studio recording of their musical Evita. The singer Elkie Brooks had previously turned down an offer. Um, Covington's recording of the song Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, each number one in 77. Later, um, when she was offered the opportunity to originate the role in the stage production of Evita, she declined, which led to Elaine Page being cast. Ah. So that's how it all fits in. Right. Uh, c- complicated. Um, but, uh, yeah, and she was also on things like the Jeff Wayne's mu- uh, musical version of War of the Worlds. That's a big but, voice in that, that era. Yeah, Joan yeah. Julie I, again, Rock Follies of 77 was the second series, wasn't it? Or, or something no, like that. She does have uh, one of the top ten hit, mm. um, OK, with Rula Lenska, Charlotte Cornwell, and that must be from Rock Follies. Yes. Um, yes. I, I guess there were two seasons, so mm. that, that fits with Andrew Lloyd, Lloyd Webber being aware of her. Presumably OK is from the second season, because mm. uh, that comes up. But um, Only Women Bleed, number 12. Mm. Now that if I'm right, that's a cover of an Alice Cooper song. Yes, it is that song. Mm. Um, I, I recognise the title from. I having... don't imagine it would be a title that would sort of get banded around with different songs. Not not like uh, the Power of Love, which no, seems no. to be used on every other no. year or something. But she does a cover version which wasn't a hit, but mm. um, it's a, it's a song I really like. It's I, I want to see the bright lights tonight, which is um, a Richard and Linda Thompson song. Um, um, now, sounds a bit a, like downtown, you know. <laughs> it, it, I'm sure it um, doesn't. Richard, Richard and Linda Thompson were in Fairport Convention, um, but uh, yeah, I want to see the bright lights tonight. I like their version, but I like Julie Compton's version all the more. I don't think I don't think um, that they were like um, chart hits for anybody, or or not in, not in single form anyway. I'm I'm sure they may have sold as part of albums and things but uh, um i can't remember how i even discovered um i think it may it probably dates back to when i got rock follies and i was looking to see uh, thinking i like her voice sometimes i find that you i really like someone's voice but yeah I, but i'm kind of i would really like something that wasn't a cover i'd really like something which you say oh right this is a julie Covington song i, I did that yeah. with um uh, recently with Maggie Riley mm. who sung Moonlight Shadow and did stuff for Mike Oldfield oh, yes. but um, I was always kind of annoyed that you know I was thinking she's got such a great voice and yet you know she's not even credited or not credited in uh, perhaps somewhere that it says that she's the coat you know she is what you the, the music is is strong obviously, mm. obviously on Moonlight Shadow but her voice is 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 what mm. sort of really stands out and mm. and and, and, and he didn't necessarily tend to give equal credit or um, um, sort of like if it was on top of the pops, it'd be Mike mm. Oldfield. Mm. Um, and, and, well, and these days it'd like, have that feet, wouldn't it? Yes, feet. it would. Yes. Yeah. And, and um, I, I found that she had done some albums and mm. stuff that she'd helped write. So her own songs. Uh, yeah, so I was quite, right. but much, and she had quite a, a you know, she, she had released quite a lot of albums, for, f- and she had before she met Mike Oldfield. Of course, you know this is just part part of the the, sto- the story, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, it it must be said, I don't think there's many songs that Frank Sinatra actually wrote, are there? To be fair. No, no. I mean, it's been it's like I'm um, talking about Elaine Page. It's like um, Barbara Dixon. Her mm. her career goes back sort of to the early seventies, and then she did things with jerry rafferty yeah. and she had a sort of her sort of uh two ronnie's phase where yeah she, she, she'd be a, she'd be the guest singer for a season or she'd mm. have she did have the odd um well, well i mean that was a massive hit i know him so well but um but january february that was a that was a big hit um but yes and then she's continued with the career and stay in acting in the stage and, mm. and and um but you know, sometimes you get sort of pigeonholed with some collaboration with somebody, mm. or, or or female singer gets pigeonholed with a collaboration with a man, and the man's it, meant. It is more. also sort of quite sad that you know some musicians, some singers particularly, their own songs are never as strong as the ones that are written by other people, and uh, or they don't gel, or they don't click, or people just mm. don't you know take to them. It is kind of weird, you know, because I mean you will go to. Well, I won't, but, you know, you might go to a, uh, you know, them playing 
you know, 10, 15 years later and they're playing their own songs and all the people love them. But mm. but it's just they're not the things that you ever saw on mainstream radio. I suppose or heard on mainstream radio or saw on mainstream television. Well, well going back to Maggie Riley, in about 1993, I... I used to I used to haunt the record shops in Birmingham oh. when I was at university. Ghost oh, Yeti. <laughs> yeah. and, and and you know, you, you could pick up sort of C C D singles for new C D singles for a pound or two pounds or something. Mm. And I'd so I'd try to and, 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 a pound. And, and, uh, and, <laughs> and, and I remember seeing Oh, Maggie Riley. I, well, I like her her, her voice. Now I'll, I'll buy it. I, I remember really liking this single, which did nothing for her. But then about, I mean, maybe maybe it did. Maybe she said, actually, it made me a fortune in Portugal, or you know. But it certainly wasn't a UK t- top forty hit. No. Um, but but about twenty years later, somebody covered it with one of those sort of. It was a. I guess it was a ballad. You could say it was a probably yeah. up tempo ballad, but. Um, but it got covered by a sort of uh, much more with a much faster beat yeah. as a da- like a dance yeah. version. And that was the top, te- the top, you know, big hit for that group. Um, and probably all over Europe. So I think they were a, a sort of mainland Europe group. So I, I was thinking, thinking, well, I hope nice she wrote, little learner for Maggie. Yeah. Nice little learner. I hope she, I hope she wrote that song <laughs> and is now making something if she hadn't already from that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of weird. Um, so I think Leo Sayer, uh, he, he was big, but I think we talked, I'm pretty sure we've talked about Leo, so we won't talk about him again. But um, I'm quite happy, though, to talk about um, some of the more uh, obscure, well, they're not They're not obscure. They just seem obscure now. Um, but, that obscure, I won't have heard anything about them. So. <laughs> well, I'm sure you have heard of a Chanson d'Amour by the Manhattan Transfer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Number one the for Manhattan three weeks. Transfer. How did they get yeah. their name? I don't know. That's why that's why I wanted to have a look. Um, they were founded in 1969. Um, they called the Golden Transfer first, and then <laughs> well, more exotic. Uh, they're uh, gosh, they've got the, the Janice Siegel, Cheryl, right. Alan, and Tim. Uh, so I was just thinking, was, was it Jefferson Starship who became Starship? Uh, yeah. Well, had about sixty-four different names and yeah. shuffled the pack every so often. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, for, wow. they 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 formed in New York, um, and it's based after the I mean, net title. <laughs> the, the the name comes from a novel by John Dos Passos. I'm sure uh-huh. that's not pronounced right. Un Dos Trasos. Yes. Um, yes. And it's quite a detail. There's a there's a whole paragraph or two about how they met. But uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, let's see. Um, yeah. I mean, I remember I remember that song being a very sort mm. of big. Um, it had quite a lot of albums. Um, mm. I, I, whether these are all unique, whether some of these are, no, I think if they, these were greatest hits, oh, there's a, one or two greatest hits. But yeah, so they, they actually had enough hits to have a greatest hits album. That is surprising because yeah. I would have thought the only one I can think of is the or at You know, it's well, the only one that comes to mind. But I must I say that's maybe if you mentioned sixteen of them, I'll go, oh yes, I remember that now. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, we will see what the, the singles are because, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, they, they released an album as recently as last year. So, wow, um, what was it called? Rat, 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 rat. <laughs> yeah, it's called Fifty. Although if they were formed in '69, not 2022 isn't their 50th anniversary. But uh, yeah. maybe there's oh, some. Oh, I'm sure oh, there's oh, some. Maybe I guess there's there's a difference between forming and when you've got your first album. Uh, well, Oh yes, their first album comes out in '71, so I guess they just about scra- scraped in. Um, but yeah, they've had um, they, they, quite, they did an album called Pastiche. Uh, uh-huh. um, that's around the time of. Uh, that's not, that's basically if I if I order a, a meat pie in in Cornwall now with my <laughs> teeth. <laughs> no, I'd like some have... pastiche, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, um, their first. Well, in the UK, well, in America, the first hit they had was called Operator right. in 1975. That got to 22. Mm. Um, and it was also a hit in Canada. Um, right. Well, 26. Uh, the first UK chart position was in 76 with Tuxedo Junction. Okay. Oh, that looks like it. Well, you never quite know with Wikipedia. Where sometimes they link things to the wrong thing. But yeah. 
Uh, it, it looks like it's a uh, a song from Tuxedo Junction. Looks like it, it's a song from the 1930s or or the early 40s. It was a number one hit for Glenn Miller. If it's presumably it's the same same song, just a different. I mean, they were sort of they 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 were um, sort of retro, weren't they? Um, I mean, Chanson de Moore certainly not a, 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 a pumping. A, um, disco beat it, 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 it's a lot more mm. old-fashioned um uh, whether that's a cover or whether that was one of their own uh oh, that is oops, that looks like um let's see sean sander more um well it says that manhattan transfer is the one that i know i think i think manhattan transfer so i think sean sander more may come from an earlier decade, like the 50s right. or something. I associate it with some reason. I associate Chanson de Moore. I can't say anything at the moment. <laughs> Chanson de Moore with uh, the Wogan show. I don't know why. It just mm-hmm. it seems to be a thing that was pushed a lot by, by old Terry. Old yeah. Terry Wogan. I don't know why. But there's a, a version in 58, a version in 66 by other people. But it, mm. does, say, it does infer that the the Manhattan transfer version is is. The, the definitive version it also kind of says they remade it so how much they changed it or or, or mixed it around i don't i mm. don't know but um they never they they do well in the uk that's by far on the way mm. their biggest hit i, they, I vaguely I, I, my vision of them is a lot of people walking around in in white suits in front of <laughs> Uh, a Manhattan skyline yeah. set on a, on a stage somewhere, but yeah. again, that's possibly just they turned up on the Lulu show or something. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the follow-up single was "Don't Let Go," that got to number thirty-two. Right. Um, then "Walk in Love" got to number twelve. That's probably the near. That's probably their second biggest hit in the yeah. UK. "On a Little Street in Singapore" number twenty. Mm-hmm. "Where Did Our Love Go" forty. Um, Honest little street in Singapore suddenly sounds familiar. No, yeah. you mention it. But uh, um, the others, I, I mean, they wouldn't have been the sort of music I was listening to, to be honest. To be fair, there's one called The Twilight Zone uh, in, in 1980, number oh, 25. Right. And um, actually, there's, there's another one further. 1983, they had a number 19 hit with Spice of Life. Is that the one where they go into the twilight? Into the twilight? Is that somebody else? It might be. No, I don't mm. know. Um, that they there's a song called The Boy from New York, which was a hit uh, in, U- in the US and uh, yeah. in Canada. You see, I can't hear that without just thinking, ooh, wah, ooh, wah, cool, cool, <laughs> kitty, which is not them either. So. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was a number two hit in New Zealand. That don't, yeah. one doesn't seem to have been released in the UK. It's funny when you know, it's like certain territories don't get certain mm. songs. But, well, yeah. I suppose they make choices. No one, yeah. you know, what they think will be popular. Uh, you, you never know, really. Why the reasonings of these record uh, places or whatever they call? Oh, look, I've just noticed they uh, ah. they even do a single with one of your favourites. Oh yeah, um, what, yeah the, two, what the one balls? What one balls? <laughs> no, that's my favourite. Um, the good two, deeds, what? No, which um, <laughs> the monkeys? <laughs> no, no. Um, uh, this might be a slight, slightly <laughs> sarcastic. Um, too busy thinking about my baby. It's a duet with uh, Phil Collins. Ah, oh, PC. <laughs> Dear God, uh, well, I suppose he would turn up for anybody. Number, 20, wouldn't he? number twenty-seven in the the adult US charts. Um, uh, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna fully understand the US charts. I'm sorry, listeners. It's it's there's so many different charts, and I'm never sure. What, I want to know what's the one that's the like the, the definitive one, the the one like like our top forty sort of thing. Mm. And I just don't think. Uh, well, was it the Billboard top one hundred? But even that's yeah. a bit. Uh, yeah. Because certain types of music don't get included, um, whereas which is a bit like how the charts are these days, but mm. but weren't how the charts were back in the no. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, we won't talk about ABBA because I feel like we probably talked about ABBA a lot over the years. Oh, have um, we? Or oh, have we? Have we? Or have we? Well, we can always talk about ABBA if we get in. We can always talk about ABBA just before they depart us or something. But they haven't just departed. I was going to say in like eighty one when they stopped. They stopped releasing singles, but uh, of course <laughs> that, that started again in twenty twenty one. But um, we've got "Free" by Denise Williams. Um, right. "Free" by Denise. We're getting Williams. a lot of. I mean, this. These are the number ones of the UK, and I just. Glancing, glancing back, um, 
the I think though that seventy seven specifically because there was that cross pollination with disco. Yeah. In the in the state, it's, you know, disco. I mean, uh, this would have been the night fever era, wouldn't it? You know. Yeah. So it was kind of like I imagine that there was a lot more parallel, you it's know, very, musical releases than there very, might have been. It's very American, but I mean, I'm sure some of the other singles, or when we get to top ten singles, mm. there'll be bands that, are, oh yeah, this is very British bands, but mm. n- none of the number ones I'm seeing. Uh, I guess Leo Sayer is. Um, yeah. Julie Covington is, I suppose. Mm. But uh, oh well. Um, so yes, Denise Williams Free. Oh, mm. she's got a good name. She's her her real name is June Denise or Denise mm. um, Chandler. Right. Um, oh so. dear me! <laughs> I didn't realise that friends in low places. No. I, I, um, I mean, nepotism sneaking into the old uh, Shy Life podcast. There, Paul. Oh, right, see our Auntie June. And- <laughs> Auntie Denise. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Auntie June, <laughs> Auntie Denise. Um, See, yeah. I, I, when you said Denise William, I was thinking, oh, it didn't, isn't she a soap opera actress <laughs> and, and, and actor? And I just, and yeah, no. Um, I don't know why. I'm probably thinking of Denise Black. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's born in Gary, Indiana. Oh, well, um, probably not. Probably never in Coronation Street. She's, she's, she's sort of. <laughs> She's younger than my parents. I don't know what. I don't know whose relation she'd be to me. <laughs> must be very distant. Yeah. Um, did she she have, she's still yeah. still doing albums as recently as two thousand and seven, which actually isn't that recent. Um, but uh, what about? Oh, it was fifteen years ago, young man. She's uh, um, she, singles wise. Hmm. Um, what else did she do that we might know in the UK? So free was number one. That's what friends are for. Number eight, that's in '77 uh, as well. Uh, well, free technically is one of those. It's listed as '76, but I think it got to us in '77. Do you think or people got to... walk into record shops and try it on when it's called free, and they go, "Well, it's <laughs> free." <Bye. on> this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, baby baby my love's all for you number 32 mm. um too much too little too late with johnny mathis number three right um you're all you're all i need to get by with johnny mathis oh she seemed, must have done an album in yeah 78 with johnny mathis or something um oh oh oh, oh. It's probably i wondered if it was was her because she had another hit which i'd which off the top of my head, I can remember far more than I can remember free. Mm-hmm. Uh, it only got to number two, but and, but it was a big hit in very, virtually every territory it was released. Let's hear it for the boy ah. uh, in 1984, and I definitely remember right. that. That that was number two, and it was it was number one, number one, number three, number one, number three, number one, number two in all the territories. That came, it, it, that that was that's it, the biggie. Yeah, I mean, really, it it across the board it did better than than free although free got to number one in the uk so um yeah it's funny it's it's, it's a funny thing and also almost 10 years for her to have a, a you know a really big hit i mean she got gold and all sorts of um but again no no sort of <sighs> If she hadn't have had hits already, yeah. you'd look at that and say one hit wonder. Because there's the follow up single of to "Let's Hear It for the Boy" doesn't doesn't chart at all. So uh, you know, I mean, weird. well, you know, Abba, Abba can sort of not record anything for forty years, and uh, <laughs> and Kate Bush can suddenly bring out a single after what twenty years or something. <laughs> I, I, I think seven years is reasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. positively, you know, working far too hard in the music yeah. industry. Yeah, well, I mean, and they, bit, you know, all the touring and all the, and I, I imagine uh, also a lot of session work and as well, you know, with uh, with a voice that gets used for other people's work. Well, very, I mean, very bizarre with with, with Kate Bush where she didn't actually do anything. I mean, <laughs> Abba did release new songs and uh, um, and I was very pleased when it because it's very difficult for older acts to the what. One of the singles was just outside the top ten, and one of them was about like number seven, uh, which is which is pretty darn good for uh, an an older act. You'd, you'd think they'd end up yeah number one in some 
old gold chart I mean, or something. They, they used to, in the 80s, they used to dig up somebody like Sandy Shaw, didn't they, as guest vocalist and everything yeah. like that. And I do remember that comeback, uh, was it Maria by Blondie, which was, yeah. what, 15 yeah. or so years after they'd, yeah. they'd done well, that got through. But the charts, were, even then, the charts were friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, in the 90s, were still mm-hmm. friendlier for older acts. But, uh, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the Kate Bush one... It, it's it, it it's mainly because it was on Stranger well, Things. Well, uh, yeah, well there was that yes, but also I mean she did that tour, didn't she, a few years ago? And I, yeah. I think there's something about um, or not a tour was it? it was more some nights at stage thing, yeah, in London. But I think the uh, the interesting thing about that is what it does prove, and I think again, what uh, is it? An- Anietta, is it? Mm. Uh, in ABBA proves it's actually if you basically hide yourself away for 20 years the the intrigue <laughs> of you suddenly appearing again will will certainly put a few bums on seats you know well she had done um she had done a couple of solo albums in the noughties which was more than uh, than Frida had but mm. um she didn't really promote them or tour them I mean she might have done a, the odd a video for them but mm. um there was this whole thing about you know, doing the Greta Garbo and not doing interviews, wasn't there? But, like but I think um, it was quite a big deal. Uh, I don't know quite when. It was the second solo album, so it, it, we're probably talking about sometime in either in the late noughties, early teens. Uh, one of the songs was written by Gary Barlow, and I think I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was. Um, it was. It was quite a nice duet that they did mm. did together. Um, but he wanted, if he could, to get her to perform it live i don't know if it was children in need or or so, probably something that he's a charity uh, he's mm. a, a part of the charity for mm. and um uh, and i think he sort of said he had to sort of really talk around and she was very ne- she was very nervous about doing the and, and but then uh, i've seen the footage it, it, Mm. Uh, she, she, you know, when she when she does it, she kind of because by then she probably feels at least she she mm. must have done quite a lot of work with him mm. leading up to it. So she feels that she's with somebody that, but it's quite sort of the sort of I think gosh, and in the seventies she was doing this all the time, and mm. it's very easy to unlearn these things or, yeah. or to have different anxieties that you didn't have when you were twenty. Or well, so. yes, I think uh, you know there's a lot to be. Uh, you have to respect the fact that yeah. there's an awful lot of freaky, stalky types out yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I completely you might want to run away from. Yeah, and I completely understood why. You know, well, it's been a big success for them. This virtual reality, or well, it's not virtual reality, whatever they like to to call it, the 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 stage, um, the, the stage show that they've done. But I can totally understand they wouldn't want to have t- toured it in person. It's have you gone you to know, that yet? I, I haven't, but only because of. Um, not not being so mobile at the moment, but I'd like to go sometime. I want to go when it's a very quiet day. There's only about six of us there. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, oh, when, yeah. when it's been relocated to the end of the Brighton Pier or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> sometimes so it, it's, I, I would I would still definitely like to go. It's like a novelty of the old Louis Two Swords in Blackpool. You know, it's kind of like it. I mean, some oh. some nice listener will treat me. Um, Pant a the Abba. Pant a the Abba. <laughs> um, or maybe the regulars will, you know, they'll they'll team up and, and buy it for my fiftieth. So ah, we'll wait and see. We'll you're dropping a colossal hint there. Yeah. So going back to seventy seven, we've got Rod Stewart, but I think we talked about uh, him. Yeah, yeah. We, we we talked Although, about him. To be fair, you know, recently has he has redeemed himself a lot with his political uh, position being stated, which I, I think is, uh, well, you know, I, I, I think he's 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 not quite. You know, as horrible as I thought he might. Be. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and maybe he is. I can't remember now. I know. He, I know he made a political stunt that was quite a revelation, and I thought, oh, well, fair enough. Much is forgiven, but not everything. So, and, and, and he didn't have an inflatable bottom. That was uh, Kenny Everett. But, uh, well, I don't think that would be a particular <laughs> criterion for me, for me to appreciate somebody. No, <laughs> had an inflatable no some, some people it's easy to confuse a um, comedy <laughs> sketch with the real man. Sometimes, no. Well, he did turn up, didn't he, on the on the Kenny Everett show? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, so they were chums. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after that, we've got Lucille by Kenny Rogers. Um, I don't think we've ever talked about Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. Who he's? Uh, he had quite an acting career, didn't he, Kenny Rogers? Yeah. Considering. 
he died two years ago um, at the time of recording, or around two years ago, um, age 81. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to be somebody who has loads of albums. And mm. I'm not quite sure about sort of, yeah, I mean, he has got quite a big uh, TV TV sort of listing. Um, Mayford, May, going back to the early 70s, um, the Kitty Rogers is the gambler, uh, mm. coward of the county. Sometimes these they do they do very westerny type things, but uh, yeah. Well, I get con- well, I mean they come from the country and western yeah. uh, arena, don't they? Really? Um, is in Doctor Quinn, Medicine Woman, in 1994. Um, I'm just having a look. It's not. It's, it's no, but it, it, didn't, it didn't. It wasn't he in the remake of a Star Is Born with? Um, was that? Oh, it's Chris Christopherson. I'm thinking of, isn't it? Of course, uh, I was. Kenny yeah, Rodney. Yeah. Sorry, forget that. I was just oh, being okay. an idiot. I'm just trying to find his music. There we go. Only discography. That's better. Mm-hmm. Um, the TV and film stuff was coming up ahead of the uh, above the music. Mm. So, actually, I'm surprised. I don't know. I don't know why I should be. I guess I kind of presume, like a lot of these people, they started in the 60s. But actually, mm. his first album. I mean, I'm sure he was around before then, mm. but. Uh, his first album isn't until seventy six, so right. so ha- having a number one in seventy seven is actually, you know, he's mm. relatively new, even, you know, in the U- US. Mm. Um, so uh, he, again, it's difficult. There all these Kennys because there was Kenny the band. Oh yes, we talked about them. And there's Kenny Loggins, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, so uh, I don't know. It, it's it's. it's 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 sometimes you you they all sort of mash up in your brain and you do get a bit. Uh, he was releasing well, he released two albums in seventy six. Mm. It's about three in seventy eight, um, mm-hmm. two in seventy nine. Mm. Um, so, uh, and then a load of a load of albums. Um, but let's talk. Let's look at the singles and that tends to be uh, compilations. Gosh, mm-hmm. lots of compilations as well. Here we go, singles. So Lucille um, wasn't his first single, but it was his first single that, right. that sort of, well, certainly his first hit in the UK. Yeah. Um, the follow-up single, though, was called Daytime Friends. That, oh, okay. That, that, uh, got to number 39. So I don't, um, to actually, he had other singles and, and yeah. did, they did better in some other territories. Okay. But like The Gambler and, mm. but The Gambler wasn't, doesn't appear to have been released in the UK. Mm. Um, but his next big hit in the UK was Coward of the County in 79. Mm. Was, was he not... one of the voices on uh, the Highwayman thing? With um, Johnny not... Cash, when they did that, you know, that song that's, yeah, I think it's got three different lead vocals on it. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not sure. It's a bit like it's a bit like what do you call them the, uh, the three tenors, only the the three countrymen, <laughs> yeah. or the four countrymen, or whatever it was. The four yeah. countrymen of the apocalypse movie. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it's weird because uh, in popular culture, uh, the country and western is so on hip, and yet they had these massive, massive songs. Well, yeah, I mean. Other than she believes in me in seventeen early seventy nine, I only got to forty two in the UK. There, there was that, you know, Lucille was big, and then Cardiff mm-hmm. County was big. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was having other hits in other countries. But um, the next hit he had was Lady in nineteen eighty, number twelve. Uh, we've got tonight with Sheena Easton oh, in, in eighty three, number twenty eight. Um, oh, islands in the stream, of course. Ah, so that, I, I even found myself saying it in the right in islands in the stream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I nearly broke into song That's there. That's what it is. Yeah, um, that with Dolly Parton. That mm. that was number seven. Um, you remembered that. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eyes that see in the dark. Oh, no, I remember. rely on you to brother to <laughs> say it. I rely on you to edit my episode. That, <laughs> that, that's kind of. It for singles though. Um, there, no, there was never a sort of su- successful follow-up to the Islands no. in the Stream. No, um, no, not, not. but other. But he had in other. I mean, let me see. These could be country charts. Well, but, in the channel or something. Yeah, it? lots of number, <laughs> lots of number ones in the country chart mm. um, in the eighties. 
in America, I don't need you. Um, love will turn you around. Um, a We've Got Tonight was number a number one hit. Um, Sheena Easton's a, a, a bit of a strange case where she had some quite big hits in America mm. that weren't hits over here. Mm. Um, there's one called Strut, which mm. uh, I I love and mm. was, was like wasn't a, a hit at all over here. I only heard it because um, talking about copyright and breaking copyright, um, a podcast I was listening to played it at the end of their show, which they probably shouldn't have done. But I'm glad they did because I was like, oh, what's this? I really like this. Um, and uh, yeah, she had a few songs. She had songs mm. that were big everywhere she had songs that were just hits in the uk and, yeah. and songs that were just hits in the us and of course then she had the prince connection mm. some of the prince ones weren't hits in the uk um, it's an extraordinary career really again made by her american career yeah, to be honest. Yeah. i think that's the thing i think if you've made it big through something like the big time a tv show i think people can i mean i'm not saying probably in the modern era less because of uh, X Factor and what have you, but in those days, people were a bit snotty about the fact that you might think you're not a real musician because you know you should be a housewife in was it Paisley or wherever it was she came from, oh, you know, yeah. you know, and it's uh, it's kind of there, there would be a prejudice, but actually then to go to the states, I mean, when you think about it, she had a Bond theme, so she wasn't, mm. you know, it it, it it worked for her, and that would have probably broken her into the American market anyway. But uh, mm. having had that voice, and, and like you say, the collaborations with Prince, it probably, you know, it it, it, it probably was a surprisingly big career she and Easton had. Now, looking at the rest of '77, we've definitely got some people we've really covered, which we don't mm-hmm. need to, because of course, '77 was the year that Elvis died so we, we've talked about mm. Elvis a bit D- David Soul has Silver Lady we've talked mm. about him ABBA has the name of the game my, my, mm. probably my favourite ABBA single mm-hmm. um, and, and what, what, what are the ones that d- d- probably doesn't get played as much as mm. some of their number ones mm. but it, it, name of the game I, I must mention though because mm. it, it, well, I, I often said it's one of my favourite moments in Pong mm. where you, you get the verse, you get the chorus, mm. you get the verse, and you think you're going to get the chorus again, and you get another verse. Ah. I, it, it's like, I, you know, I, they're the, messing with you, Paul. They're messing with yeah, you. Little, little me sitting there going, it's going to, here comes the chorus. Like, oh, no, it's well, not. Oh, we've got to wait. Scandinavian way, thinking, a, oh, I'm just about to burst in it. Ruins you a, on the karaoke. It, it, it's <laughs> a good, um, it's a good lesson to learn. That young, you don't always get what you want. You have to wait. Sometimes you have to wait it's a little bit longer. Get what you need. Yeah. yeah but also, um, it just shows that you know structured you know it can you can mess around with it and it's still very effective and works it's, yeah, yeah. of course way um, on down the uh, elvis track that became the big hit after mm-hmm. he died is is actually still one of my it's possibly uh my introduction to elvis as a songwriter i mean mm-hmm. I, I would have been at that age where they used to put elvis films on mm-hmm. So I, being young and confused and, you know, an idiot, I would have probably thought of Elvis as a film star rather than a, a songster, if you like. Uh, <clears throat> that's the right word, you know. And so actually that, but that I, I do, I love Way way Down. I think it's, uh, you know, that performance. And I, I suspect I the the Elvis um, collection I have on my shelf because I'm not I was never a huge Elvis fan at all, but I, I suspect that the the reason I have it is because I want to finally get hold of a copy of of that song because I yeah. just it's it's got I don't know it's it's a bit like you know uh, something like the Osmonds where you don't really like their music at all, but then in amongst the Osmond stuff, there's Crazy Horses, which is a fabulous rocky. A uh, high high octane piece of music, and I think I think Way Down sort of fits. Uh, late Elvis had sort of gone into that ballady phase, and yet yeah. suddenly that thing that's got a real driving rhythm to it just appealed to the the little rocker in me. What a little no, rocker! At least not, I think that's what they used to say. To me. It's, it's not You're a proper little rocker. <laughs> it's not one that I could sing this very moment. But when I edit this episode, I'd have checked it. Uh, which is why these episodes take ages to edit because I go off into the YouTube, into the land of Lu- into the into land the of YouTube. YouTube. Um, I go off into the YouTube, young man. <laughs> there, there are at least three or four groups I want to dip into, though, that we haven't talked about before. Some of them more obscure than others. Um, one that's not really obscure, 
they have show you the way to go is the Jacksons. Ah. Um, um, and and um, now you can answer me a question there then: the Jacksons or the Jackson Five? Mm. Were the Jacksons the Jackson Four after Michael went off and had his solo career, okay. or? Were were the Jacksons basically what the Jackson Five were, and Michael was the Jacksons plus one, if you like? Well, I don't know. Um, it, but he was younger than others, so yeah. did that. I mean, I assume they performed as the Jacksons before Michael sort of changed. Oh, it's their... actually it's actually a contractual thing. Oh. Um, so by nineteen 1970- seventy. When the in East End, <laughs> the, the the Jackson Five records began falling on failing on the charts by 1972, despite right. Michael and Jermaine Jackson's solo successes. I don't think right. Um, but then blah blah blah. blah they the corporation had. Uh, uh, oh. But by 1975, <laughs> by 1975, most of the Jacksons opted out of recording any more music for Motown, right. desiring creative control. Um, blah blah blah. Uh, even though the group announced their departure from the label, they still remained under contract to Motown until March '76. Motown right. sued them for breach of contract, but allowed the group to record for Epic as long as they changed their name because Motown owned the name Jackson Five. The brothers thus right. renamed themselves the Jacksons. Right. Uh, and then they released their first. And when you album. think about it, if you write it in a certain way. The S looks like a five anyway. <laughs> uh, um, Just saying. <laughs> um, so let's have There's the look. graphic designer speaking there, boys and girls. Yeah, yeah. yeah look at that. Oh, you saw that instantly, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah, it only took him 50 years. <laughs> uh, um, funnily enough, their first album was Diana Ross Presents the Jackson Five. Ah, okay. At, uh, and and um, so... Motown releases between 69 and 75, and then the CBS Epic releases between 76 and well, there was an album in 84, uh, 84 and as late as 89. Um, I don't know whether Michael st- sort of was was still in, in still mm. popping back to do mm. in those uh, the Jackson four and a half. The Jackson mm. no, there's only four of them on the covers that but by the last album, so mm. not sure. Um, but anyway, let's where are you on that, Paul? Do you feel a band or a performing act works better with three people, four people, or five people? Um, are you an even number or an odd number kind of guy? Um, think of some of my, I mean, with ABBA, obviously four works well, but then the you've got two of each. Um, but then you've got some of the like indie bands I like, like Teenage Fan Club. They have I can't remember how, if it's four or five. I think mm. they're four, but there's three lead singers in that, and they all take turns. Or they used to be they, when they were uh, when they first started that they they kind of split the songs. So like however many songs songs yeah. there were, they each one would sing the one that they wrote uh, or be the main vocalist on the one well, there that were they five take that's weren't there and there were five spice girls uh yeah. so i'm just wondering what's the optimum number of performers yeah. in any of these acts really i mean banana armor may do with three and then mm. two for a lot of, a lot of boy the... three yes yeah. i mean even the, the the collins were uh you know and then there were three with genesis you know the who had four of course uh, there, there were some bands <laughs> the monkeys. I, I, I like uh, some bands are like like Ben and Sebastian who who have um I I, I don't I no, numerous numerous people I, I there there is waddy, the waddy, 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 waddy. some of the yeah some of the I mean the Tom uh, the uh, Thompson twins when they started didn't just have the three there there was about half a dozen people in that group to start with and then they kind they they started being successful when they slimmed down to three but I mean uh, Queen were a foursome and now they're a twosome. <laughs> Um, plus guest now the looking at the Jackson 5 albums mm. um, and the Jackson albums mm. well they were never really um, an album band in the UK yeah. um, the US they had their early albums were top 10 or top 5 even mm. uh, bizarre, for some reason I, I don't know what, what made this happen but um, their 1984 album, Victory, mm-hmm. 
Well, there seems to be six of them in that <laughs> in that album. Um, I'm just trying to. I just, I don't, the picture's too small. I don't. Mm-hmm. Is, is Michael in there somewhere? 1984 would have been quite a busy time for mm. um, uh, for, for for him in, in his own right. Mm. Um, I don't. I can't see that those well, we'll come back to those but anyway for some reason that album 1984 which I guess count, I don't know if that counts as a reunion album they hadn't done an album since 80 that no. got number three in the UK I don't know no. what it was from that album that made people take note in the UK because mm. their previous albums hadn't had, had, had barely mm. their previous album had got to number 13 but their earlier albums were like number 45 number 50 mm. um but let's see what the actual hits were um, when I get past the greatest hits. Mm. Um, as the Jackson 5, right. So they did have quite a... F- they mm. had quite a few... Top- well, they had... Uh, I mean, there was a cartoon series, wasn't there? Yeah. And so, I mean, again, that sort of telly uh, exposure always sort of seems to lead to musical well, uh, it, sales. You know, it, I mean, I know the old one bad apple thing. In, in, Amer- in America, where there's the, in America, their singles were doing like number ones and mm. number twos, and um, they weren't quite as big in the UK. No. But but um, although I want you back in '69 was number mm. two, um, ABC number eight, mm. the love you save number seven, um, I'll be there number four. All of those were number ones in America, but they weren't, mm. as I say, not quite as big. For, There's a lot of Motown, so I mean, you've got you know, Three Degrees and Temptations and The Drifters and all that. They all had, you know, massive hits over here, didn't they? So I mean, it was there was a culture of, of the Motown sound. I, I don't know if it's because they do seem to be a band that were, you know, releasing two or three albums a year in the early days, and, and whether that's why some of the, they they had a run of singles in about mm. 1970, 1971, mm. which weren't doing so well again. And then in 72, Looking Through the Windows, number nine, doc, Dr. My Eyes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that. I don't remember that one. Doctor my Dr. My Eyes. That's a top ten hit. Doctor My <laughs> Eyes. I don't know, and, and for some reason, it only seems to be released in the UK. Maybe it is a Doctor Who cover version. We don't, or we don't know about. But uh, um, my eyes, my eyes. Yeah. My eyes, my eyes. they do seem to be. I mean, we sort of read about <clears> that they they weren't doing so well in, in even in America. Although they have a a song called Dancing Machine number two, number two, which sounds Dance, quite Dancing sounds, Machine. That sounds quite exciting, although. It only got to number 53 over here. Um, they, then they had, like, Show Me the Way to Go, number one. And th- in fact, now we're in a situation where that only got to number 28 in the US, and yet it was a number one. Um, it's, it's one of those weird things where uh, bands are starting to do better in other countries than in their home country. And um, in 1978, Blame It on the Boogie, number eight in the UK, ah. number 54 in America. Right. So. Was that um, the boogie isn't just a Michael Jackson song. I always thought it was. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I, 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 they sometimes like had him as a featuring as well. Yeah. I, 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 I do, I do have very fond memories of that particular song for various personal reasons. But uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in '79, they had "Shake Your Body Down to the Ground." Yes, um, that got to number four. It got to number for sim- seven in- for similar reasons. I'm fond of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it got to number seven in America, but again, it, uh, their singles were doing better in in over here. Mm-hmm. Um, then you got "Can You Feel It?" Mm. Uh, that got to number six. "Can You Feel It?" got to number six in the UK and number mm-hmm. seventy-seven in America. So, Ooh. yeah, uh, again, uh, for similar reasons. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, obviously, that al- album was just uh, yeah, very special. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, and Walk Right Now, number seven right. in the UK, number 73 in America. Mm. So, yeah, they were definitely. And, um, and then, uh, b- bizarrely, mm. in 1984, that album that seemed, I don't understand. Um, maybe people missed the single, because uh, Victory, the 1984 album, was the one that got to number three. But there were no big hits off it in the UK. So it makes you wonder whether 
the people missed the singles and went, oh, look, there's a new Jackson album, and then went and bought that rather than buying the singles. I'm not sure. But the bizarre thing is, the first single from Victory, uh, which got to number three in the States, it got to number 14 in the UK, I guess. Mm. State of Shock with Mick Jagger. So so um, uh, they do a song with Mick Jagger, a UK artist, and and the UK isn't terribly interested. But mm. but, but um, uh, it's very strange. Allegiances to different acts in different mm. countries. Um, well, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, again, possibly the first uh Mick Jagger single I bought would have been possibly Undercover of the Night, but possibly the uh, the Bowie collaboration, you know, Dancing in the Streets. But that again would have meant because Dancing in the Street is was a Martin the Vandellas originally, wasn't it? So it kind of feels that there is a, a Motown connection there. The uh uh, they had a number twenty six hit with torture uh, <laughs> off that album in eighty four, and there's a wise album track. This song is torture. Yeah, it certainly is. Yes, but um, yeah, the, 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 the latest the latest stuff wasn't doing it doing as well. No. But uh, still, it's uh, interesting how they mm-hmm. they were sort of being bigger in their own mm-hmm. the, over here than in their own country at one point for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, now another band. Um, who who has quite a, I don't think we've discussed is hot chocolate and around this time hot in in the chocolate. summer of seventy seven they had so you win again mm. um, but uh, I mean they they have a, a music to where, take your clothes off too I believe <laughs> well because they were sort of around from you know the early seventies until. Uh, I remember seeing them on episodes of Top of the Pops mm. beyond the point I thought they were having hits. Yeah, they, they had a long career, didn't they? Yeah, they um, and, and their first album was in 74, mm. and they sort of... But, but well, it was them that had the resurgence after uh, the full Monty, wasn't it? No, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, they probably did. I'm sure there's various different versions of them later mm. on. Um, the, their first single was a cover of "Give Peace a Chance" in '69. So, okay. um, but it, but released mainly in Canada. Um, it, uh, I, uh, let me just check. I, I presume that it is a separate recording. They weren't they weren't there in the background in the extra no. you know, "Give Peace a Chance" because um, it's it's '69 that the original was was done. Mm. Um, I can't see much about the hot chocolate version, but mm. I presume it is different from from the John Lennon version. And they weren't well, just a little bit. I they weren't know. just the background because it is. It does. It does sort of list them as the hot chocolate band, mm. which I don't think I've ever seen mentioned on the. John well, no, I don't think they they shared a bed with John and Yoko in a hotel for a week. Well, or well, there's quite a lot of people in the background in that song, but oh, well, maybe that even so, um, maybe that's them. <laughs> Yeah. Um, apparently, yes did a cover. Uh, I did. Well, it said yes in 1971. Paid tribute to Lennon's words on their 1971 release, the Yes album, Your right. Move. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've been taken to a link, and I've been left. I can't see any mention of hot chocolate, so I don't think I can tell him how they came to do that. It wasn't a hit anyway, so. Um, cause, uh, yes, it'll Lennon. be it'll be some record executive's idea of a, a good way to cash in. Yeah, it'll be something. It'll be something strange and mysterious. The, their first hit though was only the year later. Love is life number six, mm. which I, I don't think I no I, you know, remember. Um, you you could have been a lady number twenty two. I believe in love in brackets number eight. Uh-huh. Um, uh, you'll always be a friend number 23 these are all not so for the first three years it almost sound like the sort of things a bloke really <coughs> <want to hear. laughs> yeah. oh you'll always be a friend oh. <laughs> they, they were having they were having hits but they weren't attached to our they just hadn't got around to doing thank you mum has just bought me a cup of tea um they they hadn't got around to I'd doing like to point out that nobody has bought me one. Oh, no sorry i can email you one um yeah not yeah. sure it would so it would just ruin my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> it arrived pixelated. Ah, uh, ah. You'll, you'll always be a friend, number 23. Brother Louis, that was number seven. Still not off a, 
off, off any album. Um, Rumours, number 44. So they, they used Rumours before um, Fleetwood Mac. Mac did, but they did a lot better for Fleetwood Mac. Um, Emma, number three. That was on an that was now they're starting to do albums in seventy four. Emma, Emma Emily. Is that the one? Is that them? Or is that somebody else? But, uh, it might be. You've got Changing World, number fifty eight, mm-hmm. the Sherry Babe, number thirty one. You've got Disco Queen, number eleven. Right. Um a child... yeah, you can answer me this. Did yeah. anybody cover ABBA while ABBA was still performing? Did any of their songs get covered by other bands? Well I know that some of the more obscure ones like Banger Boomerang was either a song they gave to somebody else and then took it back and did it or or they decided uh, mm. I think it was a hit for a Swedish band okay. that they were associated with um, but then ended up on their album I can't remember if it, or, or if it was done right, so I just think it's Cherry, Cherry Baby it feels like it was a, yeah. an old classic that was being covered doesn't it? I'm sure I'm, I'm sure there might be other but I think it depended on different territories or whether they were. I think um, now was it this, this is this is uh, this is Metallica singing Super Trooper. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like SOS or I've got one of um, Frieda's solo albums, and I think it's SOS. It appears on her solo album and may have even been released as a single by her. But knowing that it wasn't going to go outside of Sweden, it mm. might have been a hit for her. I, I'm. Apologies if it's not SOS. It's definitely one of it's definitely that era though, yeah. uh, and then then they kind of released it as ABBA. Um, I think it was probably a, a a bigger, more more full of sound with the ABBA sound. But uh, okay. um, but yeah, I know there's it's certainly one of the certainly one of the ABBA singles in the time of ABBA is released as a solo single by Frida just before it is then released mm. uh, and becomes a massive international hit. We well, didn't um, get someone like. Uh, Jackson's covering ABBA or something like that. Uh, I don't think as, so. as a rule, not that I know of. Um, yeah. Because Dancing Queen's been done by the people since, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. But uh, yeah. Then we're sort of into seventy-five with Hot Chocolate. You've got You, Se- you Sexy Thing. Yeah. Um, their previous single, Child's Prayer, was number seven. Then it's, a, it's sort of very much it's sort of in waves because then you got Don't Stop It Now, number eleven, Man to Man, number fourteen. Mm. Heaven is in the backseat of my Cadillac, number 25. <laughs> There's a title. Uh, and then you've got So You Win Again. Um, mm. Put Your Love in Me, number 10. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's a winner, number 12. Um, and Mindless Boogie, number 46. Uh, uh, it does seem to be sort of definitely a bipolar um, reaction to their chart position. I think. You could probably, yes. Massive you could. Hit, nothing. Massive hit, could, nothing. I think we might be in one of those situations where where you can make a sentence out of some of their songs. <laughs> um, some of these were, but no doubt about it. Well, so now we got we got mindless boogie, and then mm. you've got going through the motions, mm. and then and then you got no doubt about it. We've got a conversation going going on here. So, Are you getting enough of what makes you happy? <laughs> uh, this number sound, seventeen. It sounds like a therapy session. L- love l- love me to sleep. Number fifty. I mean, that's that some great song titles here. They weren't. Um, Got to give up your love. I'm losing you. The B, the double A side of that is Children of Spacemen. Um, th- that doesn't seem to have a chart position. I'm going to have to yeah. look listen to that though. Um, you'll never be so wrong. Number fifty two. Some of these sound like you know, they're very, very sort of clever, witty type, or sort I, of. I actually feel you'd be paying, you know, a couple of hundred dollars an hour for therapy with that, with, and that would be <laughs> basically the questions they'd be asking. Well, we've got Girl Crazy, which in this is we're in nineteen eighty two. This is what some of the ones were. I wouldn't have. Ne- ne- you mm. kind of forget they're still having top 10 hits mm. in 1982. You've got Girl Crazy, number seven, and then you've got He Started With A Kiss, um, number five. Um, Chances, number 32. Mm. Um, are You Getting Enough Happiness? Um, and then what kind oh, of boy... You... That feels like somebody would <laughs> stick it on a wall on a piece of driftwood, doesn't it? Mm. No. Um, you've still got um, a couple of... Well, no, one of them, some of them are remixes, but their last top ten single, which is not a, an old song, is 80, 1983's "What Kind of Boy You're Looking For?" Brackets girl, number ten. Um, Tears on the telephone, number thirty-seven. I'm sorry, number eighty-nine. You will be a page with a with a chop suit of eighty-nine. Um, I gave you my heart, didn't I? Thirteen. Um, 
that's a that's 1984 heartbreak number nine oh no, heartache number nine number number 76 so <laughs> that sort of their like, that that was the sing that was the single in 86 off their right. the very best of hot chocolate but then you start getting sort of oh they're releasing you sexy thing again oh they're releasing everyone's winner again mm-hmm. i mean you sexy thing it was a top 10 hit in 87 a remix of it but uh, and then it was also a number six hit uh, in 1987, I guess that could have been. That must be around the time of Full Monty, though. Um, mm. 1987. Yeah, probably. Not. But uh, um, we're coming a little towards the end of the show. But I just, I definitely want to look at at least two more acts. Okay. Well, um, I don't know if we. Well, I don't want. I don't really want to do Brotherhood of Man, but I feel like we can't because I feel like we may have done them before, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, because they they would have had say your kisses for me in seventy six. Mm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't do them already. So uh, maybe maybe we'll um, we'll leave them for now and 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 when I when yeah. I'm sure either way we'll mustaches we'll, and velvet. That's basically yeah. all I really remember. And, and wide wide flares and yeah yeah. Mm. They, uh, they, um, they, they had they their place. To, yeah, they seem to sort of sort of. You know, Abba does Fernando, so they do a sort of Spanish yeah. themed one. It was very, very much. <laughs> let's see what Abba's doing this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can imagine Brotherhood of Man turning up at uh, Polar Studios dressed mm. as window cleaners, like, what are they doing now? What are they doing now? <laughs> um, uh, um, I, I, so I the, the, the old, uh, doing dancing queen. Quick, we'll do disco, uh, d- d- disco king, disco yeah, king. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> la la la, only twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> do 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 do. Um, just play it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about this group either, but uh, um, they did have a number one, the floaters. Um, oh, yes, with with, with, flo- with float on. Um, ah, yes, of course. Yes. Well, it's a bit one of a classic, from... that really, isn't it? Float, um, float on. Yeah, I'm not. Although, unfortunate name for a band, <clears throat> the modern age. It seems to have changed. It's another one of those words yeah. that's very much changed its meaning in yeah. recent years, young man. Um, it is the only hit in the UK. It was it, it pretty much the only hit anywhere, but. Um, um, they appear to have done a version of "You Don't Have to Say You Love Me." I presume that's yeah, that's the Dusty Springfield song. They 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 had a um, a, a relative, well, a top thirty hit with that. But the two I want to look at um, one is Donna Summer, who uh, had "I Feel Love" in seventy seven. Um, I mean, she had a massive disco massive, hit. She had a massive uh, career um, and lots of sort of. I, I actually tried some of her early '70s albums, and they, they were re- really good. She had she had did she had some really interesting people producing her before even the even the um uh, the, the the sort of disco stuff. Yeah. There was there was uh, I suppose you could say uh, early early the early disco almost before yeah. disco was not was you know, there were there. Um, and you sort of got the connection with. The European producers and things. She released her first album in '74 because because she's she's somebody who she she had peaks and troughs, but she mm. was successful again in in the late '80s over mm. here with Stockham and Waterman mm. um, produ- produced some hits from her, for her. Mm. Now we're really only looking at the. Um, I think she's possibly a case where. She 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 often or occasionally did better in the UK mm. than she was doing, not necessarily as drastically as some of the other bands. But um, "Love to Love You, Baby" was number four. Mm-hmm. That was bigger in the US. Number two mm. um, got um, sampled a lot, didn't didn't it? The, yeah. the, her, her disco stuff yeah. it got sampled a lot by other bands later on. I, mean, I feel love was bigger in the UK than the US. It um, got to number six in the US. Mm. Number one. Then she had things like. Um, Love's Unkind. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was even released as a single in, no. in the States. Um, but then you get singles like Last Dance in 78, which was number mm. 51 over here, number three. So Fortune sort of MacArthur Park was number five mm. over here, but number one. So 
American sort of, I don't know if it's because she was being produced by Europeans that perhaps it, it even though she was um, mm. American, it, the, the song, it took, it took a little bit longer. I mean, hot stuff was number one in America, but only number 11 with us. So well, there's a very, there's a big, a lot of warmth to the Donna summer tracks. You actually feel warmer listening to them. I don't know why I associate them with hot days, I suppose, or hot yeah. nights, if you like. But it just, they feel like warm songs. I don't know if that's a weirdly sort of emotional reaction to it, but they just, they remind me of sort of hot heat, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> the 80s, um, it, like, she worked hard for the money, got to number three in the States, but mm. only 25. I, I remember when I listened to some of her stuff, there were songs I recognized, yeah. like State of Independence, um, oh, yes. which is a great, great song. But that wasn't, wasn't the, that was number 41 in, mm. in, in America, number 14 over here. It wasn't a, a massive, a massive, massive hit, but it's mm. one of the, one of the ones that of the late, of, I guess the mid period, whatever, mm. um, that, that, that I like. Now, mm. um, then, I've got the, I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Anderson covered State of Independence. Mm. Or, but or I, think there are diff- I think there are different um, uh, um, oh, yes. sort of mix, mixes and stuff, or maybe remixes that did mm. better. Or, um, it might just be another song with the same title thing. No, right? well, um, because I, I remember one of the, one of the songs of hers before i knew that much about her mm. i remember a song and it looks like it was from about 1987 called dinner with gershwin okay. um that got to number 13 over here mm. i probably saw it on the charts show or something yeah. uh, i got got to number 48 and i think this was probably just before the stock and waterman sort of because then she had a couple of top 10 hits in 89 mm. with this time i know it's for real which was also a hit in the states and I don't want to get hurt. Number seven, um, that 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 another another place and time. That's that's a quite quite a good uh, album. But mm. I now I think State of Independence was was that, was it used in a film? Because there's a 1990. It does say State of Independence is a song written by John Anderson and Van Gelis. Mm. Um, I don't know whether whether they did a different version of it for. Um, it is on um, the um, Friends of Mr. Cairo, which is a an album I do have, which is yeah. a um, favourite album. I, I was I think a while ago I was listening. I used to, or maybe during the pandemic, I used to listen mm. to a friend DJ on. I think they DJed on Twitch, which mm. is often known for gaming, really. But mm. uh, and, and he'd often play more obscure um, so, sort of songs, mm. um, as well as big hits. If somebody asked for a Donna Summer song, he wouldn't necessarily play the big hit he might play something that he liked that was mm. a little bit there's a song called work that magic from 1991 right. which didn't wasn't a hit anywhere but it's very catchy and i also got it also got covered by um a, a podcast I, I used to listen to unflopped yeah. which used to cover flops of of, of mostly famous but or songs mm. that really should have been hits and mm. and they there they were there'd be they don't. I don't know what is it. They, they don't do the show anymore. But they did it about a hundred episodes, and there would be mm. two two people who would bring two songs, and then the th- the third person had to choose that they would make a case for each song. Yeah, uh, they were always flop songs, and um, the then the the adjudicator would the third member of the team would <laughs> each song would get unflopped, and um, it, it was a, it was one of my favorite podcasts for a long time, um, and and. I, I love those that, that that sort of thing where, where and it also that they'd encourage people to sort of suggest other songs yeah and and once or twice songs i suggested at least got mentioned or considered mm. and um um it, it was a very good show for sort of exposing you to songs that you didn't know existed mm. um, but uh but yeah i mean she she's releasing singles all the way through the 90s um i've there's a remix of I Feel Love in 95 that gets to number eight. Mm-hmm. But again, I, n- nothing's really, uh, nothing really that no. sort of, um, there, there's Melody of Love in 94, number 21. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, she died 10 years ago. Wow. Uh, 
age 63. So. Now, the last the last one I want to dip into. Mm-hmm. Uh, we usually go for something a little bit um, ridiculous. No. Um, um, yes, sir. Uh, I can boogie by Baccarat. Ah. <laughs> Fair enough. Tell uh, me a bit more about that. I do uh, remember it, but yes. Well, they, they were... A, a were they French? Female, they were a female vocal duo, duo formed in 77 by Spanish artists. Oh, nice. um, but there's pictures of them um, although I'm not sure that, um, uh, yeah, whether there's there's been different, slightly different. I think it looks like there's different versions of the band right. that, that may have existed at the same time or a different time. The the original Baccarat was um, 77 to 81. Then there is 83 to present is. Mm. I can't. Oh, these names I got to put out. I think one of them did a version. It looked yeah. Cool from the look of it, yes. There's, so there's po- uh, apologies for pronunciation, but there's mm-hmm. Maite and Maria. So mm-hmm. um, um, one um, and the, so Maite's version is 83 to present. Right. And then 85 to 2021 is Maria, Maria's version is going on at the same time. So there, right. I can imagine that they're battling out. Ah, but then there's also. Schism. There's also a 20, 2022 to present mm-hmm. version with two ladies' names that I don't know what their involvement with the original is, if anything. Right. So I guess it's it, all very complicated. It's a positive right. cat's cradle of, of interconnectedness. Very Bucks Face. <laughs> <laughs> original um, Bucks Face. Yeah. The new Bucks Face. Okay. The Fizz. The Fizz. The Bucks. Well, yeah, the fizz is the uh, Z Buckers. The bu- no, never known. No, not the, the 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 fizz is definitely, uh, I guess, the more successful. Uh, there is a Bucks fizz, but it's not it's not one you ever hear. You don't hear about them anymore. Whereas the fizz, which is the other, the other three members of the band, uh, are being you do have albums that come out and and do do relatively well, um, and and get invited to all of the festivals and um, so. Uh, but um, yeah, the, they did three albums: Bakura, Light My Fire, and Colors, and Bad Boys. Oh, there we um, and um, they also did quite well in Sweden, Finland, um, <laughs> and. So they were, but they were Spanish, basically. Yeah, uh, the, the, they only had French. They only had two hits in the UK. They had Yes, I Can Boogie and Sorry, I'm a Lady, which I feel oh, like well, I might. Was that have... as well? Well, there we go. Yeah, but they in 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 other countries that got to number eight. But they in other countries they had hits with Darling, hmm. um, The Devil Sent You to Lorado. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> They, they've got a a a a sailor um sleepy time toy <laughs> um um uh, parley vu francais which might be crazy well maybe that's why <laughs> uh and coochie coo uh, but uh, uh, they weren't the voulez vous couches then they weren't them no they weren't those ones no. No. okay but uh um <laughs> oh. Uh, that, that was that was that was definitely somebody else. Um, <laughs> of course, we were a lot of that up. European stuff in the charts, isn't there? A lot of that. There is. Um, there, there is. There is um, one song, big song, seventy seven. We've not not mentioned. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, we're going to finish in a minute, but I'm hoping you can lure it out for a little bit of singing. But we'll yeah. we'll get to the end of the episode first. But. Um, we won't talk about Wings this time, but of course, the end of 77 is dominated by Mullah Kintyre. Ah, old Mullah Kintyre. Yeah. Um, and, and well, I think, I mean, there, there are all sorts of, of um, different bag hits. Pipe, but, well, it be a bagpipe at the end of the year. It's just Scottish, yeah. isn't it? It's a bit Ogmanay, a bit, a bit, a bit traditional. Uh, and Mud of Kintyre is the biggest selling single in the UK um, of, of 1977. Don't give up on us. By David Soul is number two. Don't cry for me, Argentine. Number three, when I need you, Leo. Say number four, Silver Lady. Five, know me, knowing you. Six, mm-hmm. I feel love. Seven, way down. Number eight, say you win again. Number nine, and Angelo by Brotherhood of Man, mm-hmm. um, with Chanson de Moore just underneath mm-hmm. eleven. And yes, so I can boogie at number twelve. I better stop or I'll still be does, here. Does 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 it have any um, 
any uh, cousins who resemble the bagpipe? Could have <laughs> I, 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 I don't think I, I, I had enough trouble with him recently. I, I think that's not going to end well if I ask him. Um, I just wonder, we've had do you know, whether whether that might entice him to. to... I, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have. A, I, I, will, I will not ask that question. Then. <laughs> what I'm going to, what I intend to do is, we'll, we'll, we'll finish now, and we'll, we'll, we'll just have a casual chat about some of the songs, and we'll lure him out, and, uh-huh. and, and the, the sound, the, the mention of some of these other songs might. Um, might get him singing but we'll see but uh, right well martin thank you very much i think we pretty fun. much we've pretty much covered 77 so next time we'll we'll use 78 Boy, of course, we'll we, proper punk proper punk we'll get a new yeah well, we managed to get through 77 with without punk. mentioning sex pistols at all although we just have now but uh, um but uh, anyway well um thank you very much and thank you listeners thank for you. listening and um yeah we, we we'll try and lure ick out with talk of 1977 we'll see whether he emerge he prom- he'll emerge the way he looks at it is that we've done 77 in a different form we should just use his previous performances yeah. but uh, but no we want we want some new performances but anyway um goodbye for now and um speak to you yeah. soon yep. thank you take care bye-bye bye now And I'm hoping that Ick will hear us. Um, I noticed that um, Mar Baker by Boney M was quite a big hit in 77. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and Rocking All Over the World by Status Quo. Outside yes. um, the Queen. Yeah, Ever, Evergreen by mm. Barbara Streisand. How mm. Deep Is Your Love? How um, Deep? Yes, there's a question. What, what about Magic Fly by Space? Uh, that, that's, that's a confusing one because there was a band in the eight, in the nineties called Space, which were completely different. I thought you were but, saying there was a band called Magic Fly. There might be. We, we, we are the champions by Queen. Uh, uh, Boogie Nights. Oh, that's another one I need. Uh, I almost start singing it when I say it. Uh, oh, Boogie Nights. Wave. Yeah. Uh, oh, Boogie Nights. Um, I don't like the Boogie Nights, but there we go. Uh, sure we're called that year. <laughs> there's, you're, you're in my heart. The final acclaim by Rod Stewart. I don't. I don't remember the I don't remember the bracketed bit of that song. Oh. Um, it's a shame we haven't got anyone to sing any of these songs. No, uh, but uh, oh, time um, moves on. Time moves on. You, you, um, Sound and Vision by David Bowie. That was a big hit for him. Um, oh. Number three. Um, oh, oh. What about what about? I don't I don't think you're better allowed to release this one these days. It got to number two by Joe Tex. Ain't gonna mm. bump no more with no big fat woman. Oh, right. <laughs> you couldn't sing that these days. Well, no, uh, it would be it would be re-released with slightly different lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. The word "fat" would have to be replaced with "enormous." Apparently, yeah. you've you've got three three shorty waddy songs in a row. Um, waddy waddy. Dancing party when and you got what it takes. Wow. Uh, of which John, I can remember one. I think I can uh, remember when 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 you smile oh when you smile at me. <laughs> You've got o- Oxygen by That's John Michael. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I once wrote a song. Um, I once wrote a song f- um, called I once, um, once I Fell in Love with a Cornish Pasty. When I recorded yeah. it, I tried to call, record it in different styles. Pastiche? Uh, I did, I, yes, I did it as a sort of. Um, like like a ballad, um, and then I also did it as a sort of Brit poppy type, punky type song. I'm in uh, love with a Cornish pasty <laughs> that once met in a movie. <laughs> that, that must be a different sort of song. <laughs> uh, I, I think Martin Martin. I think he's coming out. Oh, okay. I think I can hear the theme music coming, but there might still be time for uh, an alien singer to sing a song. Um, Hopefully, it'll, it'll be here when we come back in a second. Yum. I gotta go now! Okay. Bye! I want to tell the children! Gotta go! Bye! <laughs> the 
It's been good, but yeah, definitely time to come home now. Wow. Really? No. Shit. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> yes, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at Pride48.com. Oh <laughs> What's going on now? Oh, it's the Shy Life Podcast. Let's go. I have a voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univospods.net. That is so cringe, oh my god. You're a man of culture as well. <laughs> Hello, what are you boys doing out here? Um, we're we're just just been recording um just been recording a, 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 an episode about nineteen seventy seven. Night music. Night music. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you think that I'm going to sing you a song, do you? Well, you know, we wouldn't expect it, but there, there are some of your favourites here. I remember from last time that, that Nobody Does It Better by Carly Simon. Um, uh, would you remember that one, Ick? Mm, maybe. Do you, do you remember how it goes? Mm, maybe. Well, would, would you sing us a bit? No, not until Martin sings. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, OK. Uh, what am I singing again? What's it, what's nobody it? does it better. Oh. Nobody does it better. Makes me feel sad for the rest. <laughs> nobody, nobody does, does it. it quite <laughs> as That's good as enough. you. I need, somebody, I need somebody to give me the... Maybe all the best. Uh, well, yeah, t- t- that was very nice, Ick. Very nice. Just keeping the British end up, sir. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to sing with you, Ick. No, oh, is it really? Well, that's me done for this episode. Hey, but we've barely started. Oh, well, you know, um, I don't think you could afford me these days. Oh, well, um, but, 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 but there's so many other songs from 77 we could sing. I know there is. You and Martin can do a good job. You don't need me anymore. All right, guys. Bye. What? Oh, no. I thought we were doing so well, Martin. Uh, uh, you know, you got to watch out for these disco divas. Well, 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 we, we can't. We can't. What can we sing? What, we have to sing something else. Um, we are the champions. Oh, <coughs> I haven't got a lyrics handy. But, we uh, are the champions, my, my friend. We will keep on fighting, fighting That's to the end. We are the champions. We are the champions. Take him down, please. Please, Ick. Martin's turned into Ick now. Oh no, I can't cope. Of the world. Boom, boom. That's that's quite a. What's the other one? What's the other one? Boom, boom. Tish. Boom, boom. Oh oh, no. Stop now. Yeah, that's quite that, well, if that doesn't if that doesn't send your ratings crashing through the floor, I don't know what will. <laughs> but uh, it's always always a pleasure to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I should stop. I can stop that. Uh, right here, oh, I can see that. Oh my God, there's nothing I like better is when another new episode of the Shadow Podcast comes out. <laughs> Oh, I love DD. Six hundred, six seventy, seven. Just the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Okay, so we'll try again for the third time. 
Le nom en français, from 677 up to 700. Okay? 677. Go and keep going, I'm just going to let it record. Et voilà.